quick vid here showing I have made some progress. Uh, this is the best angle to show what I've got done. I have finished and installed the side vents. These consist of the frame that goes into the recessed area and then four individual fingers the vertical ones so first painted everything silver and then let it dry for a week and then masked the silver off around the rectangle and sprayed the inside blue I had already put pieces of tape down where these fingers would glue so after the blue dried for a few days I peeled the paint up for where the four fingers go and then glued the four fingers into the slots. I also got the pocket vents done. They are pretty much the same thing. Print the main part of it silver, mask the silver off, paint this blue, then take the tape that I had laid down in these slots out so you can put the fingers in that are also painted the same metallic as the frame. Um, I think I had the coin return in. In my last video, there you can see the other side vent is in and around the back is the other pocket vent and the other two coin returns. So for body greebles on the bottom, that only leaves four things left. The front and the back both have an octo port and the, the power coupler. Um, I've started with filler on the octo port, the octagonal part that goes in. There's also a part that comes in behind it that has three um, circles on it. I haven't started working on those yet. And the power coupler has a piece that goes in the back that has four blue parts attached to it. That's done and painted. It gets four uh, triangular type pieces that go in the corners. Those are done and painted. It gets a small round uh, like a washer that's painted blue that I keep forgetting to print that goes on top of it and then the main frame of it gets painted silver. I haven't started on that yet other than like I said the the blue accents in the back and in the corners are done. So I just have the frame to um, prime and sand and get ready for paint and then paint it metallic glue in the four pieces in the corner, glue the piece in in the back, and then glue the washer around the front. So not too much left on the greebles, although this power coupler has got a lot of angles to it um, to sand and make it look good, so that's going to take a while. Uh, the other thing that I didn't bring one out to show, but I'm also working on the doors. So I have this door almost ready for paint. This uh, charge bay door I have not started on, but it's the smallest of the doors. This door is, um, I think I've got my last coat of primer on it right now, and it just needs a little bit of sanding and it can be painted. And then this bread pan door um, is also getting near uh, to be painted. I ended up doing these um, on my Prusa, so I had to cut the doors in half. And it was a little bit not level where the two pieces glued together. And so I've just uh, put some more filler putty to make that pretty close to the point where when there's white paint on it, I doubt you're going to notice any um, differences between the top and the bottom half. It should be pretty darn um, smooth. I have printed the um, hinges for all the doors. 
quite a while ago in PETG, I think. <laughs> I think that's what I printed them in. Um, the other piece of the hinge, the one that attaches to the doors and the servos that'll come through these holes um, to open and close the doors with remote control, um, those hinge pieces I printed, the Jason Charlton modified spring pieces, which are made for a kind of a traditional metal actuator that goes back to the servo as opposed to the Michael Badley ones where he's made it so you stuff a printed piece of TPU into the side of the hinge to activate it. It just seems like people are getting better results using a traditional metal rod. And so Jason Charlton has taken the original hinges, he's made them a bit thicker, he's added a hole for the metal actuator, and he's changed the angle of them so that they close fully because some people have a problem with their doors not closing fully. So I just went ahead and printed his, even though I did have the original ones I printed when I started the project. Like I said, they use a TPU linkage that a lot of people have issues with, and so I decided not even to try and bother with using those. So that's uh, pretty much what I've been up to at this point is, yeah, mainly getting things ready to paint, painting them, letting them dry for a week before doing the second color, which takes up a bit of time. Uh, the octoports hopefully won't be that long because the piece that goes in here that's about that deep that gets all painted blue and then there's the part behind it that's painted silver and they're separate so it's no painting something in silver masking it off after it dries and then painting blue it's just one piece is blue the other pieces are silver although there is a modification for it that i think i might try uh, because the stock octo port the back piece has open slits in it where you can actually see into the droid so some people put like speaker cloth behind it. Um, I saw that somebody has a modification where you print um, pieces that actually fill those holes. Because if you look at reference photos of the real R2-D2, there actually weren't, doesn't appear that there were holes all the way through. Some of them might have had them, but the uh, close-up pictures that they have kind of show that they the black areas might have been tape that made it kind of look like it's a hole that goes all the way through, but it's not. So I might print those just to see um, how they look instead of using the stock ones that, like I said, any lights that are going in there from LED meters or blinking on your electronics, um, you might be able to see through the openings in the stock badly octoport back piece. So yeah, quick video just showing that I am making, it might not seem like a lot of progress, but it is actually a ton of progress. I still haven't done the booster covers. I've had them made for quite a while. They are now just about ready for paint, but they scare the crap out of me because they have so many angles to them that I don't know how I'm gonna paint it without getting runs. And then there's still gonna be a whole ton of little stuff like this line in here should be silver. And I haven't started on the greebles for here, the buttons for here. I want to paint the insides of these, these gaps. I want those silver all the way around. So yeah, still a ton of stuff to do. Oh, the other thing that I've started working on is the uh, Tim Ebel, E-E-B-E-L on uh, printables. Um, he's got a different model of tool lifter that mounts inside the droid here, and then you mount the tool, the interface arm, or the uh, little claw to it. And it's a different design where some people, their servo doesn't have enough travel to get it to go horizontal. It doesn't quite lift all the way up. He's redesigned the whole piece that holds two servos and uses gears. 
and um, it looks like a really cool design and because I hadn't printed anything for the arms I haven't printed the arms the tools nothing um, it was a perfect opportunity to print the upgraded parts that he designed that people just seem to say they're just kind of better overall than the stock pieces since I never printed the stock pieces so I've got those partially assembled um, I'm starting to spend money on R2 again I bought um, servos I just ordered some servo some wires for the servos to act as the actuators that go from the servos inside the droid up to the hinges to be able to open and close the doors. So, um, also a servo tester. Um, I don't have a servo tester. I realized I should probably get a servo tester and at least test the servos out before I start assembling things. Like I said, there's, there's two servos for each side of the uh, tool lifter mechanism. And if I put it all together and put it in there and one of the servos doesn't even work when I get around to actually wiring the thing into the system. Yeah, I'll have to take it out and put a different one in whereas I can tell if I've got a dead one right away if I've got a servo tester. So that was another probably $50 order to Amazon. Plus I think it was about $30 or so for the a batch of servos and other parts needed for the tool lifter design. But yes, making progress, it's, I mean, it looks so much better with fewer holes in him. <laughs> Once those doors are on, it's just going to look even better. Um, oh, one last thing about the doors, I might have to do some filing. Um, when I put my doors on, they pretty much are an exact fit vertically. There is hardly any wiggle room and so I'm a little concerned if the hinges that uh, screw into the doors and then go into the other piece of the hinge that mounts the body if those don't line perfectly up my door is going to like scrape a bit on the bottom or the top so what I did notice looking at it is up here on both sides I can feel that I do have some plastic that feels like I should be able to file it off if I need to. So just a little bit of a rough surface up there that I think I can file. I don't think it'll interfere with this little piece of plastic, the door cover, if I file a little bit off of that. But I won't know until I get the doors painted and then <clears throat> the hinges mounted on the door and then I'll hold them up to the body and, and hope that the, the hinge pieces line up in the proper spots and I don't have to file the top. But it wouldn't be a, a huge undertaking to file the top and then just do some white touch-up paint. I mean, it's in there. You wouldn't even notice it. In fact, it's already not completely white up there anyway. So... There we go, that's, uh, that's an update for you.